Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amorfides with Many Cons Counseling and in today's video we're going to talk about the topic of being able to accept someone telling you they are not interested in you without you making it mean something about yourself. This is going to be... Um, I'm feeling a bit of an emotional video. I, I literally just got this download to make this in the first place because through my interactions with uh, viewers on my YouTube channel and um, my newly formed podcast and uh, TikTok, there's so many of us that um, st still take things as rejection uh, personally, and we allow it to um, hurt us, and we make it mean something about ourselves that is actually not true. So I'm gonna be looking at my notes because I don't want to, um, yeah, I don't wanna forget anything. So being able to accept someone telling you they are not interested in you without making it mean something about yourself this is a really big one to overcome. If you're able, first of all, to understand what are you making that mean? So say that um, you're interested in someone and you express your interest and um, yeah, they flat out tell you, sorry, I'm not interested in you. How do you feel in that moment? What do you make that mean? Do you make that mean that... Um, you're not good enough? Do you make that mean that you're not pretty enough? Do you make that mean that um, you're not at the right weight? Maybe you're not smart enough? How are you receiving this information? This is the key to understanding what um, the lesson is in this interaction. This is the key to understanding how this person is actually helping you grow with um, such um, rejection because really if you think about it the way that you are assuming that it's you like this person is not interested in you so you're assuming that it, it, it must be you that there's something wrong with that's still our inner child that is trying to heal it's rejection and abandonment wound that it received um, as a child because it, the primary caregiver was not able to fulfill its needs, right? So now we know if, if we are not able to receive safety, security, to be seen and to be soothed from the ages of zero to 12, um, the chances that we're going to develop an insecure attachment style are, yeah, really up there and we have a negative self-view. Therefore, we assume the world through those negative uh, lenses of perception that we have about ourselves. So we make everything mean that it's us that is the faulty one. It's, it's, it's us that is not good enough for them to be in a relationship with. And that is where the pain comes from. That is where the pain of the rejection comes from. It's like, you're still that inner child, like, Every time I've experienced rejection, I swear I see my little self in situations that, you know, like that I think about when I was a child and I couldn't make sense or understand why I was constantly being rejected by my primary caregiver. I made it mean that it was all me, it's my fault, that I'm not enough. So I've been repeating this pattern in my life for so long, um, but I'm, I'm so grateful for every <laughs> rejected experience that I have because if it wasn't for that rejection, I wouldn't be able to understand um, what it is that still needed healing from, in from inside. And now I also know that I chose this pattern, like I chose to um, live out these lessons. I chose who my parents were. Um, we have soul contracts with people. And then and then it just becomes like this beautiful dance of um, healing 
and growing as opposed to staying stuck in the thoughts of, uh, yeah, that I'm not good enough and I'm not this enough and I'm not that enough. Um, so just remember that every time you feel the pain of being rejected, just try to understand what your inner child is needing in that moment. Does it need to feel more worthiness? Does it, fe does it need to feel that it is uh, good enough? Does it need to feel that it is pretty enough? What does it need to feel? That is where um, the freedom from this unhelpful pattern comes in. So what the beautiful thing now is, is that we can give that to our inner child, right? Because we're adults and we can recreate that experience with our imagination. We can do a beautiful meditation where we, where we can go in and we can literally like take our inner child into our arms and give it all that uh, it has been yearning to feel from its little self. We can give it to ourselves now and yeah, um, our subconscious mind doesn't know reality from imagination. Like if we can, that's why we can manifest things with our imagination. If you can imagine it, you can become it. Same thing with this recreative experience. If you can imagine you're in a child uh, being loved, being hugged, being all these things, then you're going to stop seeking from it from the outside world because you're going to be able to give that to yourself. And then the do not assume if someone is rejecting you do not assume that it has anything to do with you is also a, a key to being free from this pattern because we have learned um yeah from the book the four agreements to like rule number one do not ever assume anything because we're always going to assume things from the lenses of perception of our core beliefs and those are acquired these are not real and true these the core beliefs that we acquire are circumstantial depending on how we grew up it's not necessary it's not the truth of who we actually are because what we actually are is worth everything so assuming through our lenses of perception will never be helpful to us if we are from an insecure attachment style because it's always going to be negative so don't even go there do not ever assume anything because that's never true because a person with a secure attachment style and a person with an insecure attachment style, if they're going to have the same experience, they're going to assume completely different things about themselves because they have different lenses of perception. One feels worthy enough and the other one feels unworthy. So the unworthy person is going to perceive everything as if it is their unworthiness. And the secure person is going to receive just as it is. Like sometimes it just... Like you can't help who you are attracted to. And if someone is not attracted to you, that doesn't mean that it's your fault. It just means that it just wasn't meant to be in that way. So it's the pain and the hurt of the rejection that we felt as children that is hurting us in that moment that we keep reliving. So go inwards, feel that pain. If you want to cry it out, cry it out. Uh, just don't stay there. Continue to enjoy your life. Like this is the key to true happiness is like no matter what, you get back up on your horse and you continue to do what feels good for you. You continue to live life in a way that is um, fulfilling to you and just you. Like not depending on anything else. Just continue to live your life in beautiful, positive, uplifting ways. Heartbreak creates so much beauty like all this heartbreak that I've experienced it's creating like this amazing videos and I'm helping other people it's all worthy it's all worth it it's and you know um there are people create songs out of heartbreak people create art out of heartbreak uh people yeah you can create anything out of heartbreak if you just allow that to channel out of you like let the pain channel the creativity that it needs to and then Immerse yourself in positive affirmations about yourself. I am lovable. I am worthy. I am enough. Um, if you need to do somatic therapy, immerse yourself in somatic therapy to release because the body keeps a score and we hold on all these unhelpful emotions that stem from our unhelpful thoughts. Release all that. Um, dance, uh, sing, 
whatever it is that brings you joy, do it every single day so you can transmute the negative feelings that come from rejection so you can become the whole the complete ver version of yourself that you were always meant to be. If you like anything about this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. I am so thankful to each and every one of you. Please keep giving me your comments, your questions, your concerns, and more specifically, more ideas for more videos because this is how I am also feeling, um, fulfilling my life, my life's long purpose to help mend um, hearts that have chosen to have these experiences in uh, this lifetime. And uh, yeah, your comments and your ideas for videos also inspire me to for the con like for content creation. So I thank you as always, and I will see you next time.